Well, hello everyone. Welcome to CBC Live for this daily prayer stream for Thy Kingdom Come. 11 days of prayer from Ascension to Pentecost. For those who don't know me, my name is Andrew Fitzgerald and I am the minister at Canterbury Baptist Church and it's my real privilege and pleasure to lead you in prayer today. This, of course, is Saturday um, and our Saturday prayer during these prayer streams I will lead us through novena prayers provided by thy kingdom come and entitled listening on the way as Jesus invited his disciples to wait and pray for the Holy Spirit so we're invited similarly to wait on God for the empowerment we need to live more fully and to invite others to share the journey of faith with us We'll reflect on various encounters in scripture, the Bible, that have shaped Christ's followers through the centuries. Each reflection invites us to pause and purposefully invite the Holy Spirit to engage with us, refreshing and renewing us to reach out in companionship and compassion to those with whom God is inviting us to share the journey of faith. If you haven't done so already, I want to encourage that you print or download the prayer journal and Novena prayer booklet from the Thy Kingdom Come website. The address for that is thykingdomcome.global and if you click on the resources tab on the home page you'll be able to locate the journals there. Alternatively you can find the relevant links on our church Facebook page and church website if you just search Canterbury Baptist Church. Well before we pray we're going to watch a film produced by Thy Kingdom Come exploring the question why or what rather do we mean when we pray Thy Kingdom Come as Jesus instructed us. Today we hear from the Archbishop of Canterbury Justin Welby and Paul Harcourt who is part of New Wine. I hope you enjoy this. What do you think happens when we pray thy kingdom come, your kingdom come, whatever language we mm -hmm. use to pray it in? Well, I, I've always understood the prayer to be asking God to come and be king, asking him to rule and reign, and, and just coming back to that place where things are the way he wants them to be. And that has to happen in me. Yeah. Uh, you know, I need that first and foremost. I need to be praying that for myself more than anything else. But I'd love to see it in, in others, because I know the joy that praying that prayer brings. When, when Jesus is at the center of our lives, where God is, is truly king over us, things, things go, they don't always, they're not always easy, but they go well. But I think there's, there's that out overflow as well, that kingdom of God is more than the, just the individual coming back into relationship with God, but it's, it's God's transformation that he calls us to be part of as well. It's an inside us and it's outside of us. Now, you see, you're, as we, I've been talking with various church leaders about this, and the common themes have been words like transformation within us and mm. outside us, which is extraordinary. And that seems to imply to me that when we pray thy kingdom come, we are both inviting, requesting, seeking God to do something, but we're also making ourselves available to do something. Is that right? Or I think so. I, I think we're not crusaders where we think the world is wrong and we're going to change it. Absolutely. We start off by recognising that we need to be transformed ourselves. And, but when we experience grace, there's always an overflow. When, when we right. are loved, we love. When we're forgiven, we forgive. Um, when we know we've received, we want to release. So there's always that sense in which, um, Lord, come and, come and bring revival, but start with me. Yes, And then absolutely. when you come, that absolutely. life that you give is going to overflow to others. And it's interesting too, you said, you know, the it's setting things right, it's the rule of God, which mm. when it's completed with the return of Christ is complete, nothing will be wrong. But you and I, we both know in different ways within our own lives have experienced pain and difficulty yeah. and, and, and things that people look at and think, oh, that's, that's difficult, that's really hard. Mm. How do you see when we pray thy kingdom come, is that a contradiction with what we're praying or how do you see that working? That's a difficult question. Yeah, well, I, th I think one of the things that we've always believed in New Wine is that um, the kingdom is already here, but it's coming. 
So Jesus said the kingdom is in our midst, but he taught us to pray for the kingdom to come. So we're always living in this foretaste. We're getting mm -hmm. glimpses. And that means that as we are experiencing difficulty or pain or suffering, or living with people who haven't been fully healed physically, or mentally, or emotionally, that what we're seeing is we're seeing God breaking in. We're not necessarily seeing everything set right yet, but we know that he's with us, and we know that he's helping us, and we're seeing grace and gift in the middle of the pain and the process. One of the great Catholic theologians says that the kingdom of God is creation restored. <laughs> so it's this big picture of what we're moving towards, but we start where we are, and that's one, that's one of the gifts of God, that he takes us as we are, and he invites us into this glimpse, to glimpse now something that we will fully experience. But we, we're in process all that time. We, we're, we're, we're being sustained on that journey through life by the sense of what will one day be complete. So we know God's goodness and God's love is going to be fully seen at that point. One of the fascinating things about New Wine, of course, is that you've got Christians from all kinds of traditions who come together. Yeah. And yet they're drawn together in different ways, implicitly, explicitly. I can't remember a lot of liturgical prayer at New Wine in the 13 years I went there. I think come yeah. Holy Spirit is probably the closest we get. <laughs> I think that's probably right. But if you said to people, do you, do you sign up to the prayer, thy kingdom come? I think it goes across all our divisions and yes. difficulties. Yes. Which to me is a very beautiful thing when I hear it here in the in the chapel uh, and we because we've got so many nationalities and churches here we say pray in your mother tongue so you get this babble of languages but they're all praying thy kingdom come and i think when when the kingdom comes we should expect it to come as well we're not we're not praying only for that future state but we're praying for the inbreaking of the kingdom now and that's that's what it is to to be a christian to, to walk by faith not by sight to you know, live in the tension of not seeing everything, but to, to walk expectantly that God is good and his goodness yeah. will be shown to us now. Fantastic. Well, I hope you enjoyed that film and there'll be more during the rest of these daily Novena prayers. Well, our prayer for today is entitled Sorry, reading from Luke chapter 18. So if you want to prepare for that reading and our prayer, uh, perhaps you could find your Bibles or, or pick up your Bible on your phone or tablet. That's Luke chapter 18. But as we ordinarily do on these days of prayer, we're going to begin with some moments of silence. We're going to wait on God with prayerful expectation. Ask him and invite him to draw near to us that we would just know and sense his presence with us as we pray today. And it might be as we sit in silence, stand or kneel in silence even, that you want to pray in the depths of your hearts, come Holy Spirit, thy kingdom come. Come Holy Spirit, thy kingdom come as we call upon God in the quiet now before we pray. So let's come to God in silence as we wait on him. Blessed are you, Creator God. To you be praise and glory for ever. As your Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your Spirit on us today, that we may walk as children of light and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Well, we read now from God's word and we read today Luke chapter 18 verses 10 to 14. That's Luke chapter 18 verses 10 to 14. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. Let's just take a moment to reflect on that passage of scripture and invite through prayer God to reveal what he wants to say to us today through this passage. as I read this passage I can't help but think that I often judge others and perhaps I'm challenged by this passage too to think that my prayers aren't always what they should be (laughs) this Pharisee certainly was not praying to God in the way that he should be I find it interesting too that the tax collector couldn't even look at God We, we read, don't we, the tax collector standing far off would not even look up to heaven. Was it, cause that, was it just that he couldn't be bothered? Or I, I, I get a sense, actually, it was, it was, it was shame. He, he was a, ashamed to look up to heaven uh, because he, he knew that he fell short of, of God's own standard. This is challenging, isn't it? And we're encouraged to humble ourselves. As John the Baptist once said, he he should increase. God, Jesus, should should increase and we should decrease. And so, Lord, we do seek your forgiveness today for the times when we judge others. Lord, perhaps we're even harbouring feelings now about people that are just simply inaccurate. Lord, forgive us for the poor prayers that we perhaps have prayed ask us to we we ask lord that you would help us to be humble today and as we humble ourselves we pray exalt us exalt us to the highest place seat us with you lord jesus in the heavenly realms we pray And so the written prayer for today. O merciful God, and full of grace, as we come into your presence, may we remove like outdoor clothes all pretense, all show, all arrogance. May our inner self be revealed, humble, honest, open, and longing to be changed by Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Let's say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. So our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. Uh, there'll be no Novena prayer tomorrow, that's on Sunday, um, because we have our usual live stream at 10.30 a.m. You'd be very welcome to join us, but we'll return to this daily prayer on Monday, on Bank Holiday Monday, so do join us if you can. Thanks so much. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and we just pray God's protection and blessing upon you today. God bless. Bye.